Um, thanks very much. Uh, so I'd like to talk a bit about some RSV research we do in the Centre for Global Health Research. And we're right at the kind of translational end of the research spectrum. We're where research abuts clinical guidelines and policy. At least that's the, the aspect of our work I'd like to focus on. So I'll give an, an, an example of some of the work we do on that, and then Harish will talk about a specific project. Uh, firstly, um, the College of Medicine set up a new institute um, on the 1st of April, Institute for Population Health Sciences and Informatics, and it um, comprises a centre for population health sciences, a centre for medical informatics, and a new centre for global health research. So Harish and I now work in this evolving uh, centre for global health research. I don't have time to talk about this, but I want to advertise our journal. We have a journal of global health. We set it up in Edinburgh as being owned by students. It's, it's owned by the Edinburgh University Global Health Society, which is a student body. And we launched it in 2011. We've had four volumes now. It's attracted a lot of attention, visitors from all over the world. And um, our impact factor is somewhere around three to five. Thompson and Reuters haven't given it an official factor. They take years to do this. But uh, it seems to be gathering interest. And uh, we're always open to news items, uh, viewpoints, original articles. So an example of some of the translational work we do is so thinking about respiratory viruses. So we've been part of a WHO child health epidemiology reference group for the last 12 years, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. We help with WHO lead this project called PREPARE, where we bring 50 groups around the world who've, who have research studies on pneumonia, essentially, and we're reanalyzing their data, unpublished data, forming a big, large data set of, of all these projects, and we're looking at clinical guidelines again and seeing if we can uh, improve the WHO clinical guidelines for the management of pneumonia based on all this um, unpublished data. We are part of the WHO BRAVE initiative. This is to identify gaps in knowledge about respiratory viruses, uh, to establish research priorities, and then promote research, multidisciplinary research to tackle some of these, particularly in terms of public health research. We've been involved in the WHO Pandemic Flu Preparedness Advisory Group. Our particular role there is looking at burden of disease, trying to calculate hospitalizations and deaths from flu and see if these can be tracked over time in countries. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation have a big initiative and priority now in maternal, in, in uh, maternal immunisation. Um, about 44% of, of child, child deaths occur in neonates, so a lot of deaths very early in life. And uh, Ga the Gates Foundation are seeing maternal immunisation as a strategy to, to protect young infants against infection. So we've been involved in their task force on flu and also actually in their discussions on, on RSV. We've been involved looking at the flu burden, but from an economic point of view, and WHO are developing a manual to calculate that. And we've been involved in Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation uh, groups looking at the investment case for RSV and flu maternal vaccines globally. And I'll tell you a bit about a recent interesting meeting we were at as part of an RSV vaccine development advisory group. So the CHERG, this Child Health Epidemiology Reference Group, we've been involved in this for about 12 years as the kind of pneumonia expertise. This has resulted in um, large numbers of Lancet publications. This is the, least, the last one in 2015, where we essentially track, we estimate uh, child mortality and causes of child mortality. And we've tracked it from about 10 million deaths a year to about 6.3 million deaths a year from between 2000 and 2013. Um, we're also looking at causes within overall mortality, and still we see pneumonia and respiratory infections um, cause a substantial uh, proportion of child mortality. They're still one of the top three causes of child mortality, accounting for about one million uh, deaths. And then we're interested in the etiology of these respiratory infections, how much is pneumococcus, Hib, RSV, flu, and so on. And I guess in summary, acute low respiratory infections are still a major cause of death, despite this dramatic fall in child mortality in the last 10 years. And the role of respiratory viruses is increasingly important, and this is for a number of reasons. Partly it's the epidemiological transition and improving access to care, but it's also the rolling out of Hib and pneumococcal vaccines against the two major bacterial infection uh, causes of uh, severe pneumonia. Uh, so part of our work is, is this burden work which influences policy makers and national governments, agencies like Gavi and WHO, and affects priority setting and, and programmes at the global and national level. 
This was an interesting um, group we were involved in um, recently, looking at vaccine development. So looking at maternal immunisation as a strategy to prevent RSV in under six month olds, but also paediatric immunisation to pre prevent RSV disease in infants and young children. And the outputs of this meeting is uh, an article on vaccine uh, coming out. Uh, the development of a protocol for RSV vaccine trials. We're looking, we're helping WHO design the, 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 the randomised trials uh, by which the vaccines will be assessed, and then laying out a vaccine roadmap because they had a very successful experience with doing a malaria vaccine roadmap. They're repeating this for RSV. So part of this work was doing this landscape analysis. These are all the vaccines, preclinical, phase one, phase two, phase three trials. And here, live attenuated and activated vaccines and various subunit nucleic acid recombinant vectors and also passive prophylaxis with monoclonal antibodies. And it's a big race, this. The Gates Foundation and WHO have, have stated that they see RSV as one of the top 10 vaccines that are likely to be in infant immunisation schedules around the world in 10 years' time. And all the companies here are lined up racing to see which vaccine is going to, to win. And currently, it's this Novavax vaccine, which is a recombinant F-protein nanoparticle vaccine, which is being um, designed for both maternal immunisation and potentially in, uh, infant immunisation. Um, part of this meeting was looking at clinical uh, endpoints for the trial. So th this is the endpoints will be severe RSV, low respiratory infections, and very severe. The trials won't have the, sat the power to look at deaths. So the main endpoints will be reducing hospitalizations and severe disease. And we've looked at the clinical criteria that could be used and some objective measure, and we've been looking at oxygen saturation with pulse oximetry. So, and the vaccine companies were part of this meeting, and it's expected the first three trial may happen as soon as this autumn. So this, there's active work uh, designing uh, the randomised trials for the new RSV vaccines. Another interesting meeting we were at uh, was looking at um, the, the GISRIS, the Global Flu Surveillance Platform. So let's say in seven years' time we have a, an effective RSV vaccine. Countries will say, well, should we purchase this? Should we invest in it? Um, Gavi will be asking this as well. And we'll be looking to national information across the low-income countries to see, to inform that process. And at the moment, these countries have very little information at all to make that uh, uh, decision. So we have a global flu surveillance programme. It's very sophisticated. It's been running for 60 years. There's 140 national influenza centres. Uh, there's six WHO collaborating centres, four international reference labs. They shared 1.8 million respiratory samples, testing them for flu last year. The question here is, could we adapt this in some way to be using these samples and testing for RSV and getting some getting idea of the RSV burden? So... Um, Partly, WHO want to set up a, an information centre to share information about RSV, but we're interested in looking at whether or not we can use this flu surveillance um, system to get information on RSV burden. And in fact, this, this morning, uh, Harish submitted to the Wellcome Trust a collaborative award, prop award proposal to do this, linking with WHO, CDC in Atlanta, and some of the big uh, uh, national flu uh, centres in um, Africa and Asia. Another initiative we're part of is Resfinet. So this is just a, a group that essentially started in Europe but now is spreading more widely and it's trying to st stimulate research on, on RSV vaccines and treatment trials. And to date there's a, um, a proposal gone to the Wellcome Trust looking at um, uh, improved ha hand hygiene and uh, RSV hospitalizations. And this group is also part of a uh, Horizon 2020 bid looking at a clinical intervention and a clinical trial. So that's just a, an overview of some of the kind of translation, translational work we're involved in in respiratory viruses, and I'll hand over to Harish to talk about uh, one project.